I worked in a company where they strictly said we are not using any framework because of things related to scalability. Scaling the tailwind ni expensive compared to when you only mm. use your own CSS. Yeah. Oh, personally, mm-hmm. I, I believe engineers should be led to do engineering work mm-hmm. and uh, politicians do their political <laughs> the work. <politics. laughs> And the managers to do their managerial roles. So you're saying they were politicians. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to call them politicians. Uh-huh. But there's no need to say mm-hmm. they have 50 acres of land. Mm-hmm. If you start using tractors, you'll finish this work very fast. Therefore, we don't have to use jambes because with the jambes, <laughs> I, I can know at a specific Where you have reached. Who did... <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Global Tech Sailors. Mejian Mwikali here and I am joined with a very beautiful co-host by the name Diana Mwingina. You you forgot a phrase, a very common phrase. I'm not the famous guy. Eh? I stopped being the famous. <laughs> okay, anyway, um moving forward, so we are doing a breaking into series where we are basically talking about breaking into the different careers that exist in tech. And um you might have heard of the others we've done before but today we want to take a focus on front end development how to break into front end development basically and that's why we have with us can i say a very handsome guest um <laughs> Her mock fungua rob. Cheers to you, Mikali. Uh, win. Let's, <laughs> let's not go there. But anyway, I'll let I'll let him introduce himself. So yes, you can go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is John Chege Kamau. I'm a front end engineer at Amitrack, and a full stack engineer in the streets. Hey, so yeah. you're you're also a full stack engineer? Yeah. So. I think that builds my first question literally. Why did you choose to focus on front end if you're a full stack developer? <laughs> okay, so um, uh front end it's a, it was a twist. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, done with campus mm-hmm. and I knew a front end framework called Vue.js mm-hmm. and a back end called Django. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just stop you right there. Vue.js and you were off campus. When did Vue.js come out? I mean, I was to ask that. Because Lianza Kuskia VJS 2021. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 2022, actually. Yeah. It's, it's quite old, but it was VJS 2 mm-hmm. when I started. Mm-hmm. But now it's at 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I started with VJS. Okay. So I knew VJS and Django. That is Django for backend. Yes. Oh, okay. then, I Django. Fin- then I finished campus. Mm-hmm. I came out here in the, to look for a job. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a VJS job. I didn't get a jungle job. <laughs> I worked as a pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. very interesting. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, so Kenya for you guys. <laughs> Kenya for you. So I worked for as a pharmacist. Uh-huh. And, um, I saw uh, an advertisement uh, for a company called Demtech. Mm-hmm. I applied. And I was called for an interview. Then I was asked, do you know Angular? I said no. Mm-hmm. Do you know Spring Boot? I said no. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> I knew VJS and Django. Django uh-huh. uh, so I was thought here we use do Spring Boot and Angular. Mm-hmm. I was like uh, since I know VJS well and it's basically JavaScript I can do Angular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they said in two days. Yeah, so in two days. <laughs> I said two days. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was like I was thought okay, good. Then uh, that evening I was called you pass the interview come on Monday. Yeah. Then uh, I started I was thought, uh, You said two days. Eh? Mm. You have two days. <laughs> so you were learning languages in two days. Angular. You were learning Angular in two days. In For context, Angular is very... I promised two days. <laughs> Challenging. You had to deliver. <laughs> I had to deliver in two days. Hey. Yeah, but basically it was just um, mm-hmm. the surface. I didn't go deeper uh. into understanding Angular in two days. It's, mm. not pos- it's not possible. So then I was like, since I had a bootstrap... That's the UI framework. 
and was like I used Bootstrap and Angular mm-hmm. and uh, Atom Tech. That's where my front end journey started. That's the story behind me and front end. That's how it happened. Okay, so that's how literally you got into front end. Exactly. Okay. So how how long did it take you to understand Angular? For context, those who don't know Angular, Angular is a front end. Front end is what the users see. Mm. Like what you interact with as a user, then mm-hmm. the back end is the logic now. It was any how one kama the user of a website. So yeah. Angular is what you use on the front end, then Java Spring Boot is used in the back end. Mm-hmm. So how long did you take to understand Angular. I'm still learning. Eh? <laughs> so <laughs> on November 8th, that should be this sometime this week. That was I think Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah. November 8th, Angular 17 is out. Okay. It is different from the all, all the Angulars I've written. Mm-hmm. It has changed how everything works. Mm-hmm. How it does looping, how it does conditional statements, the ifs, the else. Mm-hmm. It has changed everything. Now we we go back to drawing but Start learning again. So it means you okay, you starting to learn again all yeah. over. Okay, and that is very interesting. Angular is more of TypeScript, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, that's very interesting. So now if you were to maybe talk to a person who wants to get into front end development, yeah. what are some of the things that they should start looking at when they are maybe learning or something of that sort? Okay, so front end is wide. Mm-hmm. Quite wide. And it widens as uh, the devices are being developed. Mm-hmm. You see there is uh, a new Samsung that you can open like a book. Huh? Yeah. That calls for the front-end engineer to like, how does it behave on a single book, mm-hmm. on a single page? Yeah. How does it behave mm-hmm. on a full page? Mm-hmm. Does is the full page the same as an iPad? Mm-hmm. Most probably, yes, the size and all that. So that's one of the most challenging part of front-end. Mm. How do you make sure this thing adapts to different screens? Mm-hmm. How many screens will you target? Can you mm-hmm. target all the screens? Certainly not. Mm. How ca- how do you target the highest number of screens and make sure you, you have mm. all of them covered? Mm. So anyone starting uh, or planning to start on front-end development, I would tell them one thing. It's not going to be easy, mm-hmm. but it's doable because it's basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript or the brother TypeScript, which is basically the same thing, just that the TypeScript has it's JavaScript with types. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's basically starting, learn HTML, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Learn CSS, mm-hmm. B6, learn JavaScript. And with that, you'll be like, you'll have enough B6 to break into front-end development. Okay. Yeah, so I would advise one resource. Mm-hmm. It's called W3 Schools. Mm. It's a place you go start from zero. Yeah. I, I, I still go back there to date. Yeah. When I forget something, I'm like, oh, W3 schools should have these. Yeah. Go back then. For sure, it's there. Mm. Yeah. I personally use W3 schools to date. Wow. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and are for CSS. <laughs> yes, very true. <laughs> yeah. I was to ask, the, we have talked about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah. But mostly you find that people jump into frameworks such as Bootstrap, yeah. Tailwind. Mm. Is that advisable for anyone that is starting out or they should just stick to CSS Especially to grow fast in CSS? Because I think when I started out, I really ignored CSS. Mm. And I think that is why I quote-unquote hate front-end. Mm. <laughs> I can do front-end, but I don't really like interacting with front end so is that a mistake that we make should we concentrate on the css or we can just jump into the frameworks and okay mm-hmm. so i'll give a political answer hey political. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah political <laughs> answer so your son has just finished form four yeah mm. and you have 50 acres of land should they start by trying to dig using jambes or should they directly go to learn how to drive tractors? I'd say directly learn tractors. You should start with jambes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's called working smart, <laughs> not working hard. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, exactly. So that's the basic, uh, basic answer. Mm. 
starting from basics it's important yeah and uh to be honest tailwind bootstrap they also basics mm. most tailwind it's utility first it yeah. goes to the for example padding mm-hmm. is for example i say p2 yeah. that's yeah. padding and the the, the, the two has a, a number tied to the um, to the tailwind yeah, yeah so what the business of you starting to write css plus then do padding this this so at the end at the end of the day tailwind will tell you for us to have p2 mm. this is the raw css that give the p2 yeah so it's important to understand html css javascript the basics but don't spend too much time on understanding css mm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when you're creating a big website, you'll definitely use a framework. Yeah. I think I worked in a company where they strictly said we are not using any framework because of things related to scalability. Scaling is a tailwind ni expensive compared to when you only mm. use like your own CSS. CSS. Yeah. Oh, personally, mm-hmm. I, I believe... Engineers should be led to do engineering work, mm-hmm. and uh, politicians do the <laughs> the <work>. politics, <laughs> <laughs> and the managers to do the managerial work. So you're saying they were politicians? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to call them politicians, uh-huh. but there's no need to say mm-hmm. they have 50 acres of land. Mm-hmm. If you start using tractors, you'll finish this work very fast. Therefore, I would don't have to use jambes because with the jambes, <laughs> I, I can know at a specific place where you have reached. Who did? <laughs> who did? Uh, she she ah. who did? Makes sense. Yeah. Who did this one do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the only reason I would go against telling mm-hmm. people to go raw. Mm. It's important for them to understand what they are doing, mm-hmm. but it, you don't limit them and tell them no frameworks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That really makes sense. So you said, I think one of the things you said when you were starting is um, front-end is wide. So what are some of these skills that a person who wants to get into front-end must kind of like master for them to be at least somewhere in front-end development? So um, so basically front-end is the three things I've said, HTML, CSS, mm-hmm. and JavaScript. Mm-hmm. HTML is the structure the tables, the forms, mm-hmm. the paragraphs, the labels and all that. That's HTML. Mm-hmm. CSS is basically styling. What color will the paragraph be? How long will the paragraph be? What happens when the paragraph goes past two lines? How wide should a paragraph be? So that's CSS. Mm-hmm. Then there's JavaScript. JavaScript defines the logic part of front end. Yeah. For example, I'm um, to Uh, login i put my username mm-hmm. and my password when i click submit what happens yeah css will say when you click submit let the button pop a little mm. html will say let there be a button mm-hmm. javascript will say when this button is clicked go to whichever backend call this endpoint pass this data the username and password mm-hmm. if they match what is in the database log this person in so basically that's what front end entails but now it becomes wide in terms of how many tools a combination of html css and javascript can there be mm-hmm. vue js react js jsp java mm. next next mm. django next. has its own um, <laughs> front end front end yeah uh, there is blade mm-hmm. i think for php there is razor for dot net mm-hmm all these oh, them leave for springboard mm-hmm. all these where do they sit that's how wide it is yeah. but when you decide to narrow down and decide let me decide to do vue.js let me decide to do react and decide to do angular mm-hmm. the three of them all the um, extensions that is blade razor themeref and all that jsp they can all do front end mm-hmm. the same way mm-hmm. the question is what does uh, for example if you are dealing with a team and you have to decide which front end framework to use mm-hmm. you ask yourself how much do th- this team understand of angular of react mm-hmm. how many seniors do we have because a senior can switch from angular to react easily yeah. but a junior you'll have to let them do what they know what to do yeah yeah, yeah. okay so maybe um again 
you've talked about skills, but then what are some of the certifications that exist for front end and where can where can I find them exactly for a person now who wants again okay. to get mm-hmm. into front end? Okay, so for certifications mm-hmm. in any software um, mostly the software development side mm-hmm. what most people care about is the skills yeah. i don't remember anywhere i went that was asked for the certificate any paper mm-hmm. including my campus paper nobody mm-hmm. asked about that mm-hmm. don't know to say nobody cares but so far in my journey no paper has ever been asked out of me mm-hmm. however uh, papers help Mm-hmm. It's important because once you do a certification, you go deeper to understand things. Mm-hmm. Because before you are certified, there will be a lot of questions that are not basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Mm-hmm. There will be questions about what do um, material advise on uh, a drop-down? Should mm-hmm. it pop down or pop up? Mm-hmm. What happens when you try to open a drop-down and you are at the bottom of the page? Mm-hmm. Those will not be... Handled in class, really. Most um, frameworks will not handle that in a raw sense of it. They will just give you ways to do the same. But for, when you do the certifications, you go deeper. You understand things from a, a deep point of it. Yeah, yeah there are certifications. There is um, mostly Coursera has mm-hmm. certifications. We have mm-hmm. Udemy, mm-hmm. Udacity. Mm-hmm. We have Google. Mm-hmm. They give free certifications. Yeah, so that's Google. Then we have schools like Eno Moringa School. Yeah, yeah, that one can uh, also be a good basis for certifications okay. because they'll make sure you understand things not from a point of um, juju, but mm-hmm. a deep understanding of what is happening here. Mm. Yeah, okay. you have talked about skills. Nobody has ever asked you about your certificates and how you got to there. Yeah. Just the skills that you show. Okay. But I wanted to understand, for example, in the back end, you, you get questions such as how do you determine the database to use? How do you determine which architecture that yeah, yeah, okay. to use in certain, in certain different websites that yeah. you want to create? And uh, not long ago, I went to an interview and was asked about uh, I, I've used React and I've used Next.js, so why would I prefer Next.js to React? So I think there are such questions. So oh, okay. even when we learn or we're trying to write code yeah. and put something out, there are things that we have to also understand. So what are those things in the front end that yeah. we people need to understand as they learn oh, okay. how to code? Oh, okay. So... That question comes uh, a lot of times. Which, yeah. wh- why would you choose Angular over React? Yeah. Why would you choose View over Angular? Mm-hmm. Angular over View. Yeah. So one, the learning curves. Yeah. View is easy to learn. React sits at the middle. Angular has a quite a steep learning curve compared to the two brothers, mm-hmm. but uh, it's changing. As I've said, from seventeen, seventeen looks more like. Um, Remember the old PHP? The same way React does things, it's going towards that route. Mm-hmm. I didn't advocate for it, <laughs> but my hands are tied. <laughs> you I don't have a, a exactly. choice. You don't mm. have a choice. So, mostly, they, that's one aspect, the learning curve. Mm-hmm. How long does the team have to learn whatever is being learned? Oh, okay. So, the other aspect is, for example, Next and uh, React. Mm-hmm. Next is a React framework. Yeah. Next is a view framework. framework. Mm. So basically, the, anything you would do with Next, you would do with React. Yeah. But you'll have to do a lot of donkey work, mm. if you lift yeah, yourself. Yeah. But Next already handles. Everything. So React and uh, View and Angular are single page applications. Mm-hmm. How do you then uh, handle things like search engine optimization? Mm-hmm. How do you do SSR? So mm-hmm. that's why now Next and Next do it for you without you caring about the underlying yeah. what is happening. But okay. you want to do it yourself, you can, but it will be a lot of work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is interesting. Very interesting. I personally didn't know that um, Next kind of like does most of the work for you. Yeah. I personally use Next, 
next so you not next next and i think i i prefer it more to react i didn't know why i think i now know why <laughs> We'll I pass your next interview <laughs> kudos to Diana. <laughs> uh so maybe now um there has this there's been this war that that goes on between UI UX designers and mm. front end developers. What is the tag normally about? <laughs> maybe you can tell us about it. Uh, I I I said area they should be short out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, UI UX and uh, front end. Mm-hmm. The reason why most of them fight mm-hmm. is because of one thing. The when a UI UX creates um a design, mm-hmm. the question is what guided the UI UX designer? Mm-hmm. What UI frameworks do they envision to be used for this design you've given us? Mm-hmm. For example, I use material design mm-hmm. for my front end. Mm-hmm. So if I have a designer who comes with a mentality of tailwind, he'll create designs that cannot be achieved mm-hmm. because it's how material does its stuff. Yeah. If I have a designer who does a material components mm-hmm. and my stack is tailwind, mm-hmm. there'll be a problem when trying to Implement. achieve this design that has been given yeah. so it's important for the ui ux designers to understand the ui frameworks mm-hmm. uh, ask from the team what do you people use mm-hmm. because when you create for me a material a material ui ux for me to implement as a developer mm-hmm. i'll de- definitely just go to whichever material framework i'm using if it's angular and a material view i do beautify mm-hmm. react i do mui then it should be like all these things are already there yeah because again it should not be our uh, a, a war of how much of my creativity is a ui ux should i put into this without considering oh my developers are using tailwind mm. so if i give them material design design uh, uis they might not be able to achieve this well if you must achieve it remember there's a lot of work that material does to achieve a component mm. do you want your developer to go from zero and do what all what a team at google does to yeah. get the component mm-hmm. no that's basically the cause of the tug of war okay <laughs> so i think uh, we had a ui ux designer some time back <laughs> i hope she will listen to this episode <laughs> and take some few tips from john <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh baby you can tell us how does the day of um how does your day look like as a front end developer literally? Um so a day in life mm. of a front end developer. Yes. <laughs> so a day in life of a front end developer mm-hmm. is the front end developer who will decide how much do you want how do you want your day to be? Mm. I'll give an example. Mm-hmm. When you get to age 60 and you resign mm-hmm. what will be what would your day look like what would you eat in the morning you want to eat bacon from for the rest of your life mm. when do you start investing for that when you are 20 mhm you want to eat <laughs> cassava or oh, to be honest the organic foods are more expensive eh? yeah you start <laughs> investing area yeah. makes sense so yeah. as a front end uh, developer you mm-hmm. can make your life easier by making sure mm-hmm. the first time you start creating a system mm-hmm. create things called components mm-hmm. so for example what i do in a project i get i start by creating components if i'm using uh, if i have um, a form in my html mm-hmm. i'll ha- i'll have one single input one i'll just call it every time i need it mm-hmm. so i'm told hey We want a new form for example let me give an example for my truck we want a new form to mm-hmm. create a driver mm-hmm. i don't need to start from zero thinking about the driver no 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 mm. go to the single input mm. and now pass props whatever oh. this input will have you so, basically implementing dry exactly yeah you don't need to repeat yourself mm. so that makes the life of a front end developer easy, easy. Mm-hmm. and then since it's a single input mm-hmm. there's very high chances of consistency yeah 
because this input is the same one we used there. Yeah. Therefore, if there is a new CSS class to be added, mm-hmm. you don't add it everywhere you need to add. You only add it once. Yeah. You want the whole thing to be blue. Mm-hmm. Someone has said, ah, okay, 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 okay. We've been using material. Can we go to Tailwind? <laughs> if they were to make such a decision today, mm-hmm. I would just have to change one component. Mm-hmm. The whole site ch- switches. Mm-hmm. For us to move from ta- we moved from tailwind to material. Mm-hmm. I was done in 20 minutes. I told them uh, we are now material compliant. <laughs> I didn't go and confirm. <laughs> and yes, it was all material because it was just one point. Go change it. No, okay. Yeah. That's very interesting, I think. So how I your day will look like? Mm-hmm. You define it from the start. Your 20s. Oh. Okay. You invest, you have very easy <laughs> rider. Okay. Yeah. Mungina, you want to go? I, I think that is very interesting. Mm. I've learned something there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I wanted also to ask, when you started out, what was your support system like? What helped you now, assuming someone wants to start out right now, where does he or she have to look up to? Is it Twitter, LinkedIn? WhatsApp groups, mentors. mentors. What do what was your journey like? Okay, mm-hmm. so how my journey was like? Mm-hmm. So to be honest, right now if I'm to do anything, I go to the official documentation of mm. whatever I'm dealing with. Mm. If I want to run React, go to the React official documentation. But when I was starting. Things were not making sense in the yeah. documentation. That's true. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> exactly. So that's where now W3 schools comes in. Mm. It demystifies everything, makes things easy. Yeah. So if someone is starting out, I would advise two things. One, understand what you want to do end to end. You when you, you when you go to YouTube and you do a crash course, mm-hmm. things make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you go to the official documentation, you know they're like building on top of each other on top yeah. but in a, 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 a youtube video mm. they have everything in two hours <laughs> they are like okay this is where we come this is mm. where we go this is where we go yeah. this is where we go so you can get a picture of what oh. is are we dealing with here yeah. Yeah. so i would advise someone to go from there mm-hmm. understand some things end to end now with that you can go back to the official documentation and things will make sense you try to wow. understand wow. the various components exactly, yeah yeah okay so that's what i would advise anyone who is starting out with starting out yeah. okay so now apart from okay not apart from but now in front end development mm. what other career opportunities really exist so in front end mm. so in the big companies mm-hmm. the front end work is divided into different parts mm-hmm. that is there will be one person who will be his work is css Mm. There'll be someone whose work is HTML. JavaScript, HTML. Okay. Yeah, that's why you see when we are we are dealing with a big company, they don't just use div, 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 div. <laughs> you you'll even see them using main, yeah. aside, uh-huh. because every tag has what it does. Yeah. yeah. But when you are a one man army, mm. <laughs> all go div. Go to div. for the simplest option. Div. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are many opportunities, but in Kenya, to be honest, if you want to be a front end, be a front end, do everything. Mm-hmm. That's that's your career opportunities are. Maybe with time, the country will grow and mm-hmm. we'll start now breaking down there. Yeah. I hey. once. I once saw a HTML yeah, developer role and I was like, I <laughs> actually saw the same HTML. thing. <laughs> and they actually paid a lot. A lot of money. A lot just so to code in HTML. I saw it on LinkedIn some time back also and it was strange. a remote role. But anyway, we ha- we aren't there yet in Kenya, so we'll <laughs> just do everything. We have to do what we have to do. <laughs> exactly. So now maybe as we finish... Mungina, do you have any other questions maybe you don't want to ask John? No, not really. I think we have. You've exhausted pretty much everything. But then now maybe we can let John give us a parting shot. 
as we close off the episode. Okay. Yeah. So, a parting shot. There's a fight between the UI UX <laughs> and the front end developers. <laughs> That is not even very big. Huh? Uh-huh. The real fight happens between back-end developers yes. Yes. and <laughs> front-end developers. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree with this. So, uh, uh-huh. I have a slogan when working with back-end developers. Mm-hmm. Before you light your first line of code, mm-hmm. give me the API documentation. Yeah. Okay. You need to give me the API documentation before you start coding. Mm-hmm. The, I don't want a situation where... Mm-hmm. My work cannot continue because you have to someone was not finished the APIs. End point. No, you need to give me the endpoints. Mm-hmm. I should be able to finish the front end before even the back end starts. Yeah. yeah. So the things called contracts. You mm-hmm. decide what is the contract between uh, front end and back end. Yeah. We mm-hmm. are creating a driver, right? Yeah. What do you expect from the front end to create a driver? Mm. Give me that before we start coding. Mm. Then from there, we can just complete my work. And I'll say, okay, the only thing waiting is API delivered. Mm. You'll be serving different UIs. Yeah. You can be serving a mobile, a customer portal, mm. a, an internal web portal, which is basically a back office operations portal. Yeah. So how do you make sure you they, can still work? You can still work as they are uh, conversing with the UI guy, yeah. with the mobile guys. Mm. So how you do that? Make sure all the contracts give me the contract before you start writing code. Mm-hmm. With that, there is no way you'll be like, you are blocked because the backend guys cannot give you whatever you're looking for. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would advise all front-end engineers. Mm-hmm. Make sure, and also, th- but there's a caveat to that, eh? mm-hmm. because that only works if you understand a little of backend, mm-hmm. yeah. because there is a base they'll give you and you reject them. Mm. <laughs> You give me a, an API to list and it's not paginated, I'll not consume it. Okay. You give me a thousand records. No, no, we don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> you give me how much I request. Yeah. So if it's not paginated, I'll reject it. Mm. So it's important for the front end engineers also to understand how the back how end, the back end works. works. Because now that guides the basis of what you request from the mm-hmm. back end engineers. Yeah. Do you understand what is doable, what is not? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, as a full stack on the other side in the streets, I understand this is how things work. Mm-hmm. I ask you for this endpoint, you tell me it's not to a boy. I give you an example of one I've done. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's that's important also to, to understand. So basically, you're saying, even though you're learning front end, you should also at least have a flow. What the back end look like? Exactly. Where to? Don't I mean, into real. a front end. <laughs> <laughs> you'll go to the front end. You're told foreign key constraint. Fail. And you're wondering what yeah. are those <laughs> foreign? Yeah, key. So you don't know what a foreign exactly. key is. Exactly. <laughs> so it's important to understand uh, the, the details. How the back end works. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty much what we had for this episode. Maybe just to plug you some of our socials. Actually, before we actually plug you ours, I think, John, where can we find you at? Yeah, so you can find... Oh, in the streets, I'm called Kamau and Sons. <laughs> yes. Hey, so. Kamau and Sons. Hey, every yes. Kikuyu, every Kikuyu, <laughs> Kamau and Sons. So okay. I, I have a website. It's andsons.co.ke. Mm-hmm. It's a place where we write blogs. But now you can learn from zero to expert. Okay. So it's a young blog, and uh, with time we'll get there. Can I ask you? Yeah, go ahead. Assuming someone want, is a technical writer and yeah. want to write on your site, mm-hmm. do you pay them a money free? <laughs> Voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, we've not yet uh, started the side of outsourcing the oh. writing, mm-hmm. but basically uh, uh, it will be paid. Mm-hmm. Be, to be to be honest, it should be paid. Mm-hmm. Because people are putting in work, yeah. but there'll be quite a vigorous review process. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> if you write, <laughs> <GPT. laughs> oh, I think that's something we should have talked about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you write something that is not true, mm-hmm. 
we are putting the reputation of Kamo and Sons on the line. On the yeah. line, yeah. Chat GPT have nothing against it. <laughs> we code together at some times. We even have conversations yeah. outside code. Mm. Hey, have you eaten? Okay. <laughs> How is your day? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And, also, and, and also a good resource. If you used to use it well, mm. it's a perfect, it's a thing I wish it was an invention ahead of its time. I wish it came earlier. Um, Life could have been so easy. Okay. Yeah. So you aren't scared of ChatGPT taking no, away no, your no, job? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Confident about his skills. Amen. I want to be. <laughs> I you want to have that confidence. The, the, the work I do after ChatGPT gives me an answer. Mm. Is way yeah. more. I don't think there's somewhere I'm going. Eh? Mm. Yeah, I'm here to stay. Uh, <laughs> nice. We, we like yeah. that. We like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. on all, all other platforms, you go by the names? It's basically Shaggy John one five nine. Okay. Yeah. Why one five nine? Is there something <laughs> behind it? It was just uh, an an oh when I registered I was like oh let me do Shaggy John eh? mm. already taken. Help to do that. Two five four. I did two five four already <laughs> taken. <laughs> okay. I did one fifty nine. That was in twenty thirteen fourteen fifteen there. Okay. Then I'm like, oh, Kipchoge comes, I don't know, in 20 what? Mm. And he runs in 159. Ah, so it's symbolic. Ah. I'm like, oh, you took this after Kipchoge. Oh, Kipchoge took <laughs> this after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Brilliant. Yeah, that's me, that's me. You're a smart guy. <laughs> you really <laughs> are. <laughs> yeah, so now for us on our socials, Mungina, where can they find us? Global Tech Sailors at Instagram, mm-hmm. Global Tech Sailors at Twitter, Global Tech Sailors at Link. LinkedIn, mm. Global Tech Sailors at TikTok, Global yeah. Tech Sailors on all platform podcasting platforms. Yep, on all streaming platforms, basically, we are just global tech sailors. And this is just a reminder that we have our merchandise. Um, sad enough, John is not wearing one, but after this episode, <laughs> he will be wearing one. But anyway, yes, we are selling hoodies, we are selling t-shirts, we have capes, we have bottles, we have mouse pads. We have pretty much everything, everything I take you will love. So you will find a link below this episode. Please feel free to just order. And yes, um, spread the name of Global Tech Sailors out there. And I think with that, we've basically closed. And until next time. Cheers. Bye, guys.